Today I'm in Slave Lake in Alberta, Canada. I'm at the presumed final resting place of a woman named Marie Coutre. It was 1887. She was making her way from the north to the town of Slave Lake. She had gone ill. She was sick. Her family feared she was turning into a windigo. For 20 days they tried to cure her, tied her up with ropes. She begged to be killed, claiming that if she wasn't killed, she was going to kill her family and eat them. As I said, they tried for many weeks to save her. Eventually, her husband and her stepson gave in and killed her, clubbed her, and then buried her in the area right here near Slave Lake, the actual lake where the encampment was. The white authorities found out about this and arrested her husband Michael and his son Cecil. They accompanied the law into Fort Saskatchewan to go on trial. They didn't think that they would be harmed or punished because they were only doing what was expected of them. And since they hadn't signed a treaty, they were not under the law of the whites of the area. So they feared nothing. But when they went to Fort Saskatchewan, they were tried and convicted and sent to prison for six years for killing his wife and the mother-in-law as it would be. And all the historical accounts say that the Windigo, Marie, was buried right along the shores where the river met up with the lake. And this is where we are here today. The cemetery with all the unmarked graves of those early indigenous people. 93 graves that are known. It's really chilling and odd to be here at the site of a Wendigo, the burial of an actual Wendigo. So if you ever get up to the northwest area of Canada, make sure you keep an eye out for this Wendigo.